Hey there everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Jordan and I'm here on behalf of After Effects Tutorials Plus bringing you guys an awesome tutorial about EXRs. What are they, where did they come from and why are they useful? So I'm going to start off by saying uh, if you don't know what an EXR is, I shall explain it to you. Basically it's like an image sequence rendered out from uh, from 3ds Max or Maya or Cinema 4D or whatever. Um, it's basically like an image sequence, except it uh, each image contains uh, the passes for that frame. So basically what that is, is it's like this. This is what it'll look like. When you render it out, you'll get all these frames like you normally do when you render out with PNGs or JPEGs or whatever. Except when you're rendering out with PNGs and JPEGs and you have uh, separate passes, we can't really render out separate passes with JPEGs. They don't have an alpha channel. Um, so when you're rendering these separate passes with um, uh, in PNG format, let's say I've got three passes and I've got 53 frames. That's what 150 separate um, EXR. That's 150 PNG files for a 53 frame render. And you've got all these file, all these uh, PNGs everywhere with all different names, and it's all a big mess. EXRs what they do is they comprise each frame each individual EXR image contains all the separate passes that you told it to render out so what that means is this frame here this first frame has got has got my specular my diffuse and my um, shadow pass all in one frame all in one file and what this means is you'll get the quality of having it all in an image in an image sequence, so you don't have it compressed into any form of video, but you also get that um, organization that you get from uh, having um, QuickTime files, so that what you have is, with a QuickTime file, you, when you render it out in separate sequences, you in separate uh, passes, you've got uh, one QuickTime for your specular, one QuickTime for your diffuse, one QuickTime for your um, shadows, and one QuickTime with the finer render on it. These have got the best of both worlds. That is, the quality of an uncompressed image sequence and the organization of just a normal um, QuickTime or video compressed render. So you've still got 53 separate files, but it's easier for After Effects to read 53 files instead of 153 that, are, uh, that make up a 53 um, frame composition, if you get what I mean. So basically, they're increasing in quality and keeping organized and that's a really big thing when working in such an industry where you can have up to eight passes for a single you know um, let's say we've got a, 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 ten, pa a, a 10 pass render and um, it's only it's only 10 frames uh, that means we're getting a, like what a hundred separate PNG files if we render them out as PNGs for a 10 frame, it's not even a full second, and that's a hundred of these, that's a hundred images. It's so unnecessary, whereas with this, we get ten images, so that, to that, and that's our render. So, now we're going to get into 3ds Max, well, I'm using 3ds Max, so everything you see here is enclosed in the project files, so that is the plugin we're going to be using, and the, UA, the UAV EXR sequence that I have used for this. Uh, so this is the image sequence, so you guys don't have to render anything out unless you want to use your own um, EXR sequence. So anyway, let's get right into the th the 3D side of things. So here you can see my basic setup. I've just got this animated UAV, animated camera down here as well. So that just tracks it along and does some quirky angles just to give us an idea of what it'll look like, just to give us a really good just to give us a good selection of angles. So so once you've got everything set up, ready to render with, you've animated everything, make sure your uh, the correct box is selected, the box you want to render from. Uh, we're going to go up to Render Setup. And for those of you who do not have a 3D application, um, there's heaps of free ones out there, but for the meantime, why don't you just kick back and enjoy watching us 3D people do our stuff. So we're going to go to um, after our resolution, Select the resolution, basic thing, select the range, or I'm going to render a single frame for this one. 
Then we're going to go down here and we're going to, to make sure this works, we have to go to Assign Renderer and just make sure that our um, our renderer is set to Default Scanline Renderer or Mental Ray Renderer because renderers like Quicksilver and iRay, they are based on the graphics card or um, GPU rendering and last time I did that with an EXR, it didn't fare well, things went really, really weird. So make sure that's set to either scanline renderer or m mental ray renderer then we're going to go over to where we normally go to for multipass rendering and that's render elements so if you're new to multipass rendering basically what it is is it's allowing us to as i said separate each of the channels so that we can modify them individually so a diffuse pass you always have to have some form of diffuse or beauty pass um, in there um, when we're adding them if you if you've got your uh, renderer set to mental ray, use the MR ones. If you've got your renderer set to um, scanline, then we're going to use the normal ones. So like FumeFX, Fire and Smoke, and uh, Z Depth and whatnot. So let us get right into it. So I'm going to use the Diffuse Pass, uh, the Specular Pass, and the Shadow Pass. So that's Specular and Shadow. And I've already got them there. So you'll just add them in like so. Once you've got them in, there's one extra step. So for those of you who are used to multipass rendering, don't worry, we don't have to do any expressions or anything complex like that. It's just go down to here, select files, go to save as type, and select open EXR image. So you'll click on that. Now, when you're rendering, when you go to save your name, make sure that it doesn't have a number at the end of it. Because I tried, to, I did that, I wrote UAV1, and uh, it when I imported the sequence, it made After Effects. Uh, think that there were, if this was a, like a 10,000 frame composition and that it had like 945,000 frames missing. So just make sure that's set to that and when you select Open EXR, you'll get a menu like this and if you don't then go to Setup and just click that. You will get a little box like this. So first thing is first we go to Render Elements as we did before Add. Those are the ones we added in. So if you don't have them added in under render elements in your render setup they won't appear under this tab so once you've added them go up to here to format and make sure it's set to full float 32-bit channel otherwise you're gonna have a really weird looking image and it probably won't be as high quality as we want it to be so once you've got that all set up everything's good click OK click save and now you can go down here and click render so I'm gonna render out one frame for you guys just to, so you can see what it's going to look like. Once it's finished you'll get a whole bunch of boxes like this and these are all your passes. So this here is our base pass, this is what uh, you'd normally get rendering out with a QuickTime file and it's, it's very bright, you know, it's okay and it's got fairly decent shading. However when we go to our passes here you can see we've got a specular going on here this is all of our shininess this, this. then this is our shadow pass and as you can see there's heaps of shadows on this and this is our um, diffuse pass so again this is just the base texture um, not as bright as you can see but still fairly bright due to the lighting situation I've got I've got a skylight in so once you've done all that we are finished with the 3D application so you can minimize that or close that or whatever I minimize it because I can do that now I used to work on a little um, business laptop uh, and now I have like ultimate power or ultimate speed so I feel good. Anyway, so open up After Effects and uh, you should be able to do this on pretty much any After Effects that I know of. Um, if you're using CS2 or below, like even just go and get the trial of CS6 just for this tutorial just because you know you should. Um, because C CS2 is old, really old. Anyway, I'm not to judge. So to get the sequence into After Effects, we're going to import it just like any normal sequence. Right click on our project panel, go down to Import File, or press Control i find where it's saved to, in my case, it's saved to here, and select the first one that has numbers, because otherwise that one will just sort of import a single file. Um, but down here you can see it's automatically ticked open EXR sequence if it's not ticked ticket or make sure that you've got one with numbers selected or you've got a sequence at all 
Um, and if you want to, you can force alph alphabetical order, but, you know, this has already got numbers right at the end to order it pr properly, so we just do that. It's like the first one, click open, and now we have our sequence in. So if I go down to make a new composition, bam, we have it with the alpha channel and everything, and that looks awesome on that alpha channel. Look at that. That's sick. Look at the shading in there. So you can see how rendering it out as an image sequence really pays off. Um, this one, this particular one doesn't have any textures on it, I don't think. Uh, oh, it does. It does a little bit, but it doesn't have the missile textures. I'm sorry about that, but such is life when you're down. Na, 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 na. Did any of you know that song? I like that song. It's a fun song. It's a good film as well that had that song in it. Anyway, um, not getting sidetracked. I know the back propeller is not animated. Don't. I'm not a 3D artist. I'm a two. I'm a compositor, not an animator of Roto Blades. I will do that with the final version of this film. But I did animate the little thing at the front there. You can see it slightly animated, but that is irrelevant. That is not part of this tutorial. So, next up, this is the best part about EXRs. You ready for this? So we want to split our channels. We want to get access to our specular, our RGBA base, like that final render, which is what we're seeing now. And we also want to get access to our diffuse so we can track things to it and increase the color r resistance. I don't know, you know, paint it, paint it gold, whatever you want to do to yours. Um, and that's basically what we're going to do here. So we're going to use something called Pro EXR, and this comes with After Effects CS5 and CS6. Don't know about CS4. If it isn't, it's okay. if it doesn't come with CS4, then it's okay because you'll see in a minute. So just select your sequence once you've got it into a composition. Go up to Effect. I'm going to go to 3D Channel. I'm going to click Extractor. All right, and there we go. You can see an immediate difference there. Um, so. Now, to do a proper extraction, because we've got weird little lines going everywhere now, we go up to here, left click on that, and now we can extract uh, our individual channels, so our red, green, blue channels, because remember there are different levels, if you worked in Photoshop with red, green, blue, it's all black and white and whatnot, and it's weird. So we want to extract, let's say, our specular pass, because that'll give us a good idea, um, because it's diffuse and, um, the diffuse and the RGBA base are pretty similar. So we're going to go down to here, and as you can see, there's shadow RGBA, diffuse RGBA, normal RGBA, and then specular RGBA. So go through R, then green for G for green, then B for buffalo, then A for alphabet. It's the wrong one. That's the right one. And so then you click OK, and you don't see any change because now it's on black. We should find something. Come on, show us my specular. There we go, there's a little bit right there. So yes, yeah, so you can see there that we've got a little bit of specular going on in there. But this is basically what EXRs are used for. Um, separating the channels so that we... Aha, here we go, we're getting something. Separating the channels so that you can modify them. So let's say I want this object to be much shinier. Let's go into... Uh, let's select this. Effect, color correction, curves. Alpha, and let's up the alpha, and now suddenly we have a much more shiny object. Then we can color correct that. Can do that again. We can color correct that up the reds in it, make it a glowing red, or change the lighting situation depending on what the director or what we want as visual effects artists. So now, let's say you have the scenario that I mentioned earlier. You've got a 10 pass project, and you've rendered it out in EXRs. You're going to have to go through, make 10 individual layers. And each time, go through, diffuse, and do this every single time. It will get annoying. I promise you, I've done it, and it gets really annoying. Before I figured this out, um, the company who makes um, uh, Pro EXR, fnordware.com, here's their website, uh, they have uh, a package you can download for Windows and Mac, and I've included it in the project file, so you guys don't have to go looking for this website, but props to them for this for making this. It's an awesome creation. And yes, going back to After Effects and Photoshop without Pro XR is completely unthinkable. Unthinkable. I agree with you, Ben Grossman. Is that Grossman or Grossman? Or Grossman? What is it? Grossman. Grossman. So, to put the plug-in in, in 
plug the plugin into After Effects, uh, you want to download the project files and you'll get a folder like this. You get these two folders, so go to Pro EXR plugin. If you're on Mac, that's the DMG file. I don't know what you're going to do with that. I'm terribly sorry. I wish I knew, but I have no idea what you're going to do with that. I'm not a Mac person. So on Windows, if, you're, if you've got uh, CS4 or below or CS5 and above, you're going to use 64-bit uh, for CS5 and above and 32-bit for CS4 and below. So in my case, I'm going to use 64-bit. So just right-click on the plugin, copy, then go to your install directory. In my case, it's in, under Ralph, project files, program files, sorry, not project files. Adobe After Effects, then you'll go into support files, plugins, format, and just paste it right in there. And I'll click copy and replace. Yeah, that's right. I'm using it at the moment, so it says no. So once you paste it in there, just close all this down and restart After Effects. I'm not going to restart After Effects because I'm lazy and slow. And once you've restarted After Effects, I'll give you guys some time. Okay, that's enough time. Sorry, I know. Had a good tune going on there. So once you guys have got After Effects back up, go to your sequence. Now, if you go up to File, go down to here, you should see about midway, midway down, Create Pro EXR Layer Comps. So what this is going to do, is it's going to do exactly what it says. Bam. You've got a folder. If you open that up, you'll have your sequence in there, and you'll have something called your sequence name, and then Assemble. If you double click on that, you will have four compositions, If in my case. I've got my final render, like the base render, that you saw before, um, like just a general sequence put into a composition there. Um, then you'll have all your other passes below it. So this is the beauty of EXR files. This is what it comes down to. So now not only do we have ultimate organization, but also we have a plugin that's going to extract all of them for us, save us a heap of time. And uh, when it comes down to working with, you know, one you know, if you've just got one sequence that you're working with, you know, you can go through and get them all individually, but if you're working with a series of shots and you've got to get them all done in, like, a couple of days, then this is a great way to just save that little extra time and just give you, take a little bit of stress off your shoulders, just the little things that count sometimes. So now I'll show you guys some things you can do once you've extracted all, your, all of your EXRs, all your passes. So now we can do stuff like, let's solo the the specular, let's see where it takes us, so let's go to here, there we go, so we've got some good specular going on up here, so let's go effect, color correction, curves, crank up that alpha, so now we've got a really shiny object, let's blur it just a little bit, just give it a tiny little blur, like 0 0.6 of a blur, just to soften it a little bit, let's check that, yeah, it's pretty good, and now, if we go to here and make that bright, as well. Now we can turn it back on and we barely see any difference. But this is where I tend to this is what I tend to do. I tend to turn the RGBA top channel off and now we get a slightly darker image. Um we've got slightly um more realistic shadows. But if you if it looks better for your scene, you know, definitely use the RGBA pass on full or turned on in this case. But this is basically what you can do with the XRs. Now you can go through and modify your diffuse pass um, without fiddling with all the shadows and completely ruining it all. You know, there's, as you can see, rendered most of the ambient occlusion within the diffuse. However, there are ways of extracting that ambient occlusion before you render. Like using render elements, you can render out separate passes for um, for ambient occlusion and stuff like that. But that's we got all that because we used a skylight in my. I used a skylight in my scene, so. That's pretty much it, guys. So, um, in the final effect, you can see I animated a background onto it. It was really, really rough, but um, go download the project files for yourself and experiment. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you found it informative as well. Um, thanks to After Effects Tutorials Plus for giving me this opportunity. It's a lot of fun to do this, and I'll most definitely be back here to do more tutorials in the future. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.
Jordan out.